Imagine you've been awake for 72 hours and then you're made sit on the comfiest sofa in the world. No matter how hard you try, you can't keep your eyes open. That's how I feel every day with narcolepsy. When I was 13, I started to fall asleep in front of the TV every day after school. Between the ages of 13 and 16, my symptoms gradually got worse. I dozed off at school and missed big chunks of my lessons. I'd be writing my exercise book and suddenly I'd start to fall asleep, and my writing would turn to scribbles. It even got to a point where my narcolepsy was putting me in danger. Drifting in and out of sleep, as I walked home from school, I was nearly hit by a car. Unconscious of where I was, I stepped into a road. Luckily the cars managed to swerve and avoid me. Later on, I began to develop cataplexy, a condition which often goes with narcolepsy. Cataplexy is the complete loss of muscle tone after experiencing a strong emotion. Sometimes when I laugh, I can't hold myself up. My body becomes like a sack of jelly. My head goes fuzzy, my eyes roll back so I can't see. I lose power over my jaw so I can't talk. Everything turns to mush and I have to scramble through to regain control. When I first went to the GP, they didn't think anything was wrong with me. They just said, you should eat better, do more exercise, blah, blah, blah. Between the ages of 13 and 16, I went to dozens of appointments with various different doctors at multiple hospitals. Because narcolepsy is quite rare, only 0.05% of the population have it. Many of the doctors I saw had never come across it before. They came up with various theories from chronic fatigue syndrome to psychiatric disorders. But the symptoms just didn't add up. It wasn't until I was 16 that I was actually tested for narcolepsy. The strange and sometimes painful tests involve having electrodes stuck to my head and fluid taken from my spine. I was referred to a specialist sleep doctor who helped me through the complicated process of getting the drugs that I needed. They have massively reduced my drowsiness during the day, but I still often feel tired and almost always have to take naps. I've had to learn to be a lot more organised and I know that I have to make the most of my waking hours. Even though the process of being diagnosed was slow, it can be a lot worse. Diagnosis of narcolepsy can often take up to 10 years. Many people struggle through the dark throughout their whole lives with little or no support. This needs to change.